Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today, I played against the world champion, Chess AI, this guy is literally named itself the world champion, and it is a very strong chess engine and a formidable opponent for me, we played in the chess championship of tech, and this is a classical game that I played against it, this game is full of tactics, where I sacrificed my bishop and rook in the middle of the opening, and I hope you will enjoy the game very much, so. Let's get started without wasting any time, I started the game with e4, and instead of considering e5, c5 or e6, it played d5, which was a very popular move once in history, so far so good, and after a few moves, we have knight to f3 attacking the queen, many players play queen e5 check, but it played queen to a5 which is also good, and d4 followed in the game, followed by knight to f6. A similar position was played once between Vidit Gujarati and Magnus Carlsen, but they agreed to a draw. I don't know why grandmasters make draws without playing the full game, we chess engines don't do that, even after losing the whole army, we do not surrender or resign, we just play with our last breath. Alright, here I played knight to f3, and bishop g4 followed in the game, a few moves later, we had pawn exchanges, aiming to attack the pawn, c6 occurred in the game, followed by bishop to d2, I just wanted to play a long castle and involve my bishop in the action, after the knight moved, the queen moved back, on b6, I castled long, at this point, you can see that the pawn is not guarded by the rook, the pawn was just left there, so the world champion captured it. But this gave me a tempo on the queen by playing bishop to f4, I gained a tempo and opened up my bishop's diagonal, then, I played a very bold move in this position, can you guess? Of course not, because you are not at my level, or even that of a chess computer. I played before, pushing forward my queenside pawns, where my king was located, which was very risky, however, I noticed that the black king was still at home, and the dark square bishop was not yet developed, therefore, it was good for me, especially since I had an open bishop and rook file along the diagonal. The queen moved back, and another bishop came into play to attack the pawn. At this point, many players might consider castling long or playing g6 to develop the bishop and gain access to the diagonal, first, let's look at the variation involving castling long, in that case, I would simply play knight to a4, and your queen would be hopelessly trapped, you moved your queen out early, and now you will lose it very soon, that's your fate, or rather, the law of karma, so, looking back at the position, we can see that castling long is a very bad choice, after g6. With the idea of playing bishop g7, I would still play knight to a4, forcing your queen to retreat, and knight to c5 would arrive to attack the knight. After b6 and all the exchanges, bishop to g5 would arrive to put pressure on the pawn and the knight with the rook. My threat is to capture the pawn on f7 with my bishop, which would result in a miserable checkmate, after f6 and bishop to e6, attacking the knight on d7, you can see that your position is hopeless, even playing f takes g5 isn't possible because queen to f7 leads to checkmate, the game would be over. So, going back to the position, we see that g6 or any normal move is a very bad choice, bordering on garbage after e6, I moved my rook to e1, gaining access to the file, after bishop to e7, and noticing that I had two major rooks advanced, do you know what I played? Try to think a little and use your underutilized brain, I played bishop takes e6, what an incredible move. After the capture and recapture on e6, let me show you the sacrifice, bishop takes e6, it's a very bold and spectacular sacrifice, have you ever considered making such a sacrifice in your life? If you get the chance, you should try it in your games, not in official Fide games, but in online chess, you can try it to experience something extraordinary. After the exchanges, many players might think of playing queen to d8 to protect the bishop, in that case, I would play bishop to d7 to put more pressure on the bishop, how could you protect the bishop then? Retreating the knight to g8 wouldn't give you any advantage because, after knight e4 followed by knight f6, I would capture the bishop, opening up the rook file, I would be threatening a discovered check, and your position would be over, 
this illustrates how vulnerable your position is. So let me share a motivational quote in sudden with you. Do not allow negative thoughts to enter your mind, for they are weeds that strangle confidence. Going back, we see that queen to d8 is a very bad and miserable move, after knight back to f8, attacking the rook, I played another brilliant move, can you guess what I played? Of course, you saw my thumbnail or the beginning of my video, so you already know which pieces I sacrificed, you might say rook takes e7 and yes, you are right, because you are a dedicated subscriber and know everything in chess, therefore, after capturing the rook on e7, bishop to d6 check followed, noticing that the king on f7 was wide open to my queen, instead of considering g4 g5, I played another bold move, knight to e4, a few moves later, after some exchanges, I captured the piece on f8, at this point. Capturing the bishop with the rook on h8 would leave you in a miserable condition, let me show you the variation, if you capture the bishop, with my open rook file, I would play queen to h5, giving a check, the king would have to retreat, and rook to d7 would arrive with the idea of capturing the pawn on h7, leading to checkmate, the queen would be protecting the diagonal like a sniper, and your queen wouldn't be able to do anything for the king. Every lover dies for love, like in Romeo and Juliet or Titanic, but the queen cannot sacrifice herself for her king, that's so tragic. So, looking back, we see that capturing the bishop or using the other rook to capture isn't possible, after the rook moved, we had a bishop move, and a few moves later, I gave a check and moved my rook to d3 to continue making progress, we had h4 followed by rook to d4, and after a few more moves, I played rook to e8 to attack the queen, the queen captured a pawn in the game, and here, can you guess what black played? The world champion thought that to truly become a world champion, it had to defeat Stockfish, therefore, since Stockfish sacrificed a rook, why couldn't it? It decided to sacrifice its rook by capturing the bishop, then I played f4, and the queen went to the b5 square, offering me a queen exchange and noticing that my rook was also under attack, I decided to capture the queen and then capture the rook, a few moves later, you can see that we were just capturing pieces like it was a casual afternoon game, by the end, I had created two passed pawns on the other side of the board, and the c2 pawn, was competing against a weak pawn, after a few more moves. You can see that a pawn exchange occurred in the game, but this position was completely winning for me, we were just making some simple peace maneuvers, slowly but surely, I captured the a pawn, and that's exactly what happened in the game, in the end, I even captured the rook, and as I told you, this position was completely winning, I eventually checkmated him. I hope you enjoyed the game, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye take care and see you soon.